NASA is actively planning missions to send humans to Mars, with preliminary steps including the establishment of a lunar base to facilitate shorter journeys to the Red Planet. Similarly, Elon Musk, through SpaceX, aims to lead the charge in the race to Mars. Additionally, discussions are underway among European and Russian space agencies regarding their own endeavors to send humans to Mars. However, the challenges of Martian survival loom large, particularly in terms of sustaining life once humans land on its surface. The absence of sufficient oxygen is a critical concern, prompting NASA to explore methods for oxygen production on Mars. While the International Space Station already generates oxygen, the process may not be directly applicable to Mars due to differences in atmospheric composition and environmental conditions. Many reasons drive the urge to explore Mars. People are curious about the science and there's a natural human desire to discover new things. But alongside this curiosity, there's a sense of urgency. We're worried about disasters happening on Earth like the ones that wiped out the dinosaurs millions of years ago. Climate change makes this concern even more pressing. Elon Musk wanted to have people on Mars by 2026, but now he's aiming for 2029 because of various reasons. He's not the only one in the race. NASA is also working hard to get to Mars. The main goal isn't just to get there first, but to make sure people can live there safely. Scientists are figuring out how to make life support systems, like producing oxygen, work on Mars for the long term. Even though there are a lot of challenges, Mars and Earth have some similarities that could help us adapt and explore there. A Martian day is almost the same length as a day on Earth, just 39 minutes longer. Even though Mars has seasons and ice caps like Earth, its atmosphere is much thinner and lacks enough oxygen for humans to live there. Figuring out how to produce oxygen on Mars is a big challenge, especially if we want to build sustainable colonies with lots of people. When pondering the challenge of preserving human life in harsh environments, the critical importance of life support systems becomes abundantly clear. Take, for instance, the remarkable feat achieved by the International Space Station ISS, a beacon of ingenuity and resilience in the cosmos. For over 25 years, the ISS has stood as a testament to human innovation, providing astronauts with the vital elements necessary for survival, oxygen and water. Consider this. Each occupant aboard the ISS requires approximately 45 liters of water per day, totaling an astonishing 16,200 liters annually. Furthermore, to sustain their respiratory needs, astronauts consume around 1,000 kilograms of oxygen gas each year. These staggering figures underscore the meticulous planning and sophisticated engineering required to maintain life in the unforgiving vacuum of space. So, how do we make water and oxygen in space, far from Earth? Figuring out dependable ways to generate these resources is really important for missions that last a long time, like ones to Mars and beyond. The ISS uses two important systems to keep running, the water reclamation system and the oxygen generation system. Understanding how these systems work is crucial because they can't just be copied and used on Mars. The water reclamation system on the ISS recycles human waste, like urine, sweat, and moisture from the air, turning it back into clean drinking water. Likewise, the oxygen generation system separates oxygen from water using a method called electrolysis. In this process, an electric current is passed through water, splitting it into oxygen and hydrogen gases. Oxygen is crucial for breathing, but hydrogen, also produced, is flammable and poses risks. To deal with this danger, another system called the Sabatier system combines hydrogen with carbon dioxide to make water and methane gas. The methane, which could be used as fuel, is released outside the ISS, while the water is reused. However, the need for refueling missions to keep essential resources stocked reveals the limitations of these systems for longer missions to Mars. While they work well on the ISS, sustaining life on Mars requires self-sufficiency and independence from Earth's resources.
When we look closely, it's clear that the ISS relies on refueling missions to keep going, and it's pretty efficient, with a success rate of 98%. But even with such efficiency, every system has losses and occasional leaks, meaning water and oxygen need to be topped up from Earth after months or years of use. Refueling missions are incredibly expensive, costing millions to transport just one liter of water, 400 kilometers above Earth, to reach the ISS. The cost skyrockets for the much longer journey to Mars, making the current way of making oxygen not practical. To tackle this issue, NASA launched the Mars Oxygen in Situ Experiment, MOXIE, with the Perseverance rover in 2021 to see if we can make oxygen on Mars. MOXI uses the plentiful carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere, which makes up 95% of it. It heats and compresses the carbon dioxide to 800 degrees Celsius, then uses electrolysis to split oxygen molecules from the carbon dioxide. This process needs a lot of energy. But MOXI has some problems. It uses a ton of energy, and there's a risk of carbon layers forming during the process, which can make it less efficient. To overcome these issues, we need new ideas, like technologies that can separate oxygen from carbon dioxide at lower temperatures by vibrating them apart. While these advancements look promising, testing them on Earth is tough because of our atmosphere, making Mars a better place for experiments. The paramount objective lies in the establishment of an autonomous oxygen production system on Mars, harnessing its native resources for sustainability. Unlike the ISS, which enjoys the convenience of proximity to Earth for troubleshooting and resupply, any malfunction within Mars's oxygen infrastructure presents a formidable hurdle. In the vast expanse of the Martian frontier, the absence of a swift return to Earth in case of emergencies underscores the critical importance of crafting a robust and self-reliant oxygen system. Indeed, the stakes are high for any breakdown in Mars life support systems could jeopardize not only the success of future missions, but also the safety of astronauts on the Red Planet's surface. The reliance on Earth for assistance is not an option, necessitating meticulous planning and engineering precision to ensure the autonomy and dependability of Mars oxygen generation apparatus. Thus, the endeavor transcends mere technical challenges, it embodies a testament to human ingenuity and resilience in the face of daunting cosmic obstacles. As we embark on this audacious journey to Mars, we are compelled to push the boundaries of innovation, leveraging our collective expertise to overcome the formidable challenges that lie ahead.